Hello and welcome to the Luke Lunchtime Takeaway. We're going through Luke's Gospel, looking at the life and claims of Jesus and following him on his journey to his crucifixion and his resurrection. I want to start with a strange question today. Do you like a good conspiracy theory? Now, I know that's a delicate question at the moment, and I'm not a proponent of conspiracy theories. I mean, Oxfordshire down the years has had plenty of its own. Um, who really killed Dr. David Kelly? Was there a conspiracy behind the death of Eri Neve, MP for Abingdon, back in 1979? Was it Republicans who killed him, or was it MI6 and the CIA? And so on. We can multiply conspiracy theories. We want to believe conspiracy theories because they get us off the hook. There is something about them that rebels against the establishment, and that, that plays into something inside us, isn't it? They tell us very often something that we already want to believe, and therefore we're predisposed to believe it. They play into our imagination. If we love reading thrillers and so on, then we'll fall for conspiracy theories very easily. And they get us off the hook. In other words, a conspiracy theory means we don't actually have to believe something else which we are required to act on. And that's why conspiracy theories are often very attractive. And I say that because it happened with Jesus. Jesus was performing miracles and somebody, somebody came along with a conspiracy theory to explain it all away. There was a man who was possessed by a demon in Luke chapter 11. And the demon made him mute. I don't know if you've ever met someone who maybe has had a stroke. I met a man once who'd had a stroke and for years had been unable to speak. And it's a terrible affliction. This man was unable to speak because he was possessed by a demon. And Jesus drove out the demon and suddenly the man is able to speak. And it didn't just set him speaking, but this particular miracle got lots of tongues wagging. And this was the conspiracy theory that they came up with. Verse 15 he casts out demons by Beelzebub, the prince of demons. And other people said, well, that might be one explanation. We're not satisfied. We want another sign. So people really were not wanting to believe in Jesus. Now, this conspiracy theory was attractive because it allowed people to get off the hook of whether or not they had to believe in Jesus. If they can explain him away as some sort of evil conspiracy to trick us, then he can be rejected. If Jesus is evil, we don't need to believe in him. And Jesus replies very quickly, verse 17, every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste and a divided household falls. Now, it's true that lots of empires collapse from the inside, whether it's the you know, Alexander the Great or the Romans or the Soviet Union or whatever it might be. Uh, they are sort of contradicted on the inside and so they collapse. But if Jesus is working for Satan, why would he drive out demons? Surely he would want to send demons into other people's lives. Um, rather, Jesus says, I have come to destroy the dominion of darkness. Listen to these words. If it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come among you. Jesus tells a parable to explain what he's saying here. Um, there's a strong man. He lives in a palace. He's a rich man. He has loads of possessions and riches. And so his palace is a fortress. It's ringed with barbed wire and, and, and many, many guards and so on. Um, and all his goods are therefore safe because the place is a fortress. But then along comes a stronger man and the stronger man breaks in. And the first thing he does is he takes the strong man, who is a great threat, and he ties him up. And when he's tied him up, then he's able to go and take all his goods and, and, and the man's livelihood is destroyed. And Jesus uses that as a picture of what is going on in his mission, what he is doing. You see, at one level, Jesus is a great teacher. He reveals God's truth to us. It's wonderful to listen to him. The crowds come and listen to Jesus. He is a kind pastor. He shows great interest 
in the needs of the vulnerable and the, the marginalized. And he cares as a savior cares. He has come to rescue them. Jesus has also, though, come as a king to establish the kingdom of God and to overcome the dominion of darkness, to break Satan's power. Now, normally, in normal times, we don't like talking about darkness, except for some strange reason in the days leading up to Halloween. So let me talk about darkness. Jesus has come as a light breaking into the darkness. By his death, he defeats the dominion of darkness. He defeats Satan and all his minions. And Satan's kingdom begins to unravel. You see, death itself is Satan's greatest weapon. That's what he used against Adam and Eve in the garden. Um, he, he told them they would never die. They wouldn't die if they ate of the fruit of the tree. And as soon as they ate it, they began the process of dying. And eventually they both died. Satan loves to give us the same lie um, and to try and convince us um, that, that we will live forever and then he catches us with death. If we ignore God for our lives, he's caught us when we die. But Jesus, by his death, has broken the power of death. He has dealt with our sin, the sin and guilt that condemns us to eternal death, by taking the punishment for that upon himself at the cross when he dies in our place. And Jesus has risen from the dead. He's broken death's power and he gives eternal life to all those who come and trust in him. And there's a little footnote here at the end of the story, um, verses 24 to 26, where Jesus talks about a man who has a demon cast out. And the problem is that then he does nothing. Um, and, and the demons come back and they bring more of them with them. And his last situation is worse than the first. It is not enough to turn our back on our past. We need to replace it with the new life of Jesus to drive away the dominion of darkness and replace it with the kingdom of light, to live for him, to have his eternal life born in us, to transform us. We need the risen power of Jesus to change the whole direction of our lives uh, and to give us a new beginning. Please never write off Jesus as a conspiracy theory as though there was something about him that we haven't been told. He is the light of God coming into the world and he shatters the darkness. And we, as men and women and children, must turn to seek him and to follow him and to trust in him. He is God's king, come to banish the darkness and bring in the light. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you again next week.